Welcome to the Inject Creativity Live Show. My name is Rob the Robot from the Adobe Education Team. This is a free online show for primary, secondary and post-secondary educators interested in enhancing digital literacy, communication and creativity in the teaching and learning process. Here are your hosts, Dr. Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithkin. Thanks, Rob. Welcome to the Inject Creativity Live Show, a show based on encouraging digital creativity in all curriculum areas and levels with the help of Adobe Tools. Welcome, Erin. Thanks, Tim. And a special welcome to those who've joined us live and those watching on demand via the Adobe for Education YouTube channel or the Australasian Adobe for Education Facebook group for this, the 78th episode of Inject Creativity Live being recorded in September of 2022. For those of you who are with us live, we do encourage you to say hi in the chat, share where you're from and add some comments throughout the show. We have Tim Cosgrove from Canada in the background monitoring our chat and he will share the most relevant comments as they come in. And let's start this episode with an acknowledgement of country. We respect and honour all Indigenous people from the lands we reach out to during this event. We acknowledge their stories, traditions and living cultures. We acknowledge them as the first educators and the first creatives and we commit to building a brighter future together. Well, I'm coming to you from Wurundjeri land in the Kulin Nation, otherwise known as Melbourne, Victoria, Australia. And I'm coming to you from the country of the Jagara, Yugara and Agurapul people from around the area, otherwise known as Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. Let's welcome our techie whiz and Adobe Senior Customer Success Manager, Jerry Wong, to the stage. Hi, Jerry. Hi, everyone. I'm coming to you from the home of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, otherwise known as Sydney, New South Wales. During this episode, we will be, oh, we will have the wonderful Peter Hutton uh, from Future Schools. We'll be promoting the coming APAC Adobe Education Summit later this month. To help promote the summit, we'll be going through some of the expected highlights and some of the workshop opportunities. We'll also be sharing a number of Adobe related education resources and professional learning opportunities for you to take back to your schools, universities and other places of learning. We do hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you do, please share it with your our colleagues and wider education networks via the Adobe for Education YouTube channel. You're watching Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. Wow, let's meet our special guest for this episode and welcome back to the show, Peter Hutton. Hello, Peter. For those who have not met you before on our show, please, please tell us about... Oh, there's the clips. <laughs> Hi, uh, Tim and Erin. Great to be back. Um, Peter Hutton. Uh, I was the co-founder and uh, director of Future Schools. And Future Schools is an organisation that now works with 110 of the most innovative schools around Australia, those who are aspirational to innovate. Wow. 110. So, Peter, that's, that's increasing almost on a monthly basis, it seems. That's great. Yeah, no, we've been very pleased. I think post-COVID, um, school school leaders have been looking around. You know, they've lifted their heads. Uh, they want to take advantage of all our COVID learnings, our post-COVID learnings, and really drive their schools forward. So we've been very pleased to welcome some new members. So, Peter, what's something new in your professional life that's happened since you were last on the show back in March this year? Yes, well, we've had a, a rather significant change professionally, or I've had a significant change professionally. Uh, future Schools was looking at starting our own model uh, of a Future Schools Learning Hub. And uh, unfortunately, we uh, we didn't meet our finance commitment, but uh, instead I have been appointed as Executive Director of the Gisborne Montessori School. So working with the board and the uh, parents and students at Gisborne Montessori, we will be bringing to life um our future schools uh ideas in a in a montessori context so that's super exciting i did hear about that peter and i was really excited to uh to see that on socials and um i'm, I'm waiting for my invitation to come and join you and visit the school Absolutely, Tim. You're most welcome no pressure no pressure peter no pressure, but, uh, no, pressure. <laughs> no pressure at all um so but, uh the English, there we go. Uh, Peter, as an educator, what makes you tick? 
Yeah, the tick word is an interesting one, isn't it, Erin? Like we're sort of going back to the uh, pre-digital age there and what makes me tick, but I was born in the pre-digital age, so it's a good question. Um, I, I think what makes me tick is the fact that personally I hated school. Um, you know, as a person who's dyslexic, you know, it was an act of ritualised humiliation day after day. And uh, I, don't, I don't want that experience for any young person. So perhaps I'm trying to rescue a younger version of my former self. It makes a lot of sense. It's a good motivator. Well, Peter, we are looking forward to hearing from you later in the show. Clara here from the Adobe Education team. I lead our global educator community programs, and thank you for watching Inject Creativity Live. If you haven't already, be sure to check out the Adobe Creative Educator program, which you can check out below at adobe.ly. Well, Clara, the 2022, Clara, Clara, thank you, Clara. Erin is here, not Clara. Well, Erin, the 2022 APAC Adobe Education Summit is coming up very soon on Wednesday, the 28th of September. If you haven't done so already, please do register via adobe.ly forward slash APAC dash edu dash summit 22. We already have had over 2,600 views to the summit site. It's going to be a great event. Let's meet some of our presenters. Yeah, and I've got an update. If you were at the last episode, you would have met some. We've got some new ones now. Here they are. I'm going to be at the APAC 2022 Adobe Summit. I am looking forward to sharing uh, some of the work that I'm doing, learning some of the things that you are doing. Clara here from the Adobe Education team. I lead our global education community programs and I'm excited to see you at the APAC Adobe Education Summit. Just to get some new ideas, it's great to see the keynote speaker um, and I particularly love picking up um, tips from my peers as well. So always um, time well spent attending the summit. Hi, Ben Forter here and I'm looking forward to seeing you at the APAC Adobe Education Summit. It's a great opportunity to work with and learn from an array of colleagues who I admire and respect. I'm looking forward to meeting like-minded people, doing digital technology skills and increasing those and, and also networking with others. It's a chance to connect with like-minded creative educators and share our experiences. Because I believe it's a fantastic opportunity to connect with my colleagues and find out what amazing things they're doing with Adobe tools in their classrooms. This is a great way to meet new colleagues and reconnect with old colleagues. It's fun, friendly, and free. It is the best way to learn everything I need to know about the latest Adobe updates, and it's also a really good chance to see best practice. It's an awesome event filled with educators who wants to empower everyone with the use of Adobe tools and technologies. It must be spring in Sydney, and we all know that's where folks will be physically and virtually, learning and sharing in all things creatively Adobe. I want to be inspired by some of the best Adobe education leaders in the world with their amazing ideas that I can bring back to the classroom. I know that this will enhance my own creativity in lessons, and I know that this will also achieve better student learning and outcomes. After two years of COVID and remote learning, Zoom calls, Teams meetings online, I think it's going to be amazing to get back in the same space with uh, my fellow educators. It provides me with opportunities to meet with educators that are creative and passionate about providing opportunities for students to succeed in their learning using a variety of the Adobe digital tools. It's a great opportunity to share ideas, learn from friends, develop skills. It's such a great way to learn new things and to collaborate with other people who are working in your space as creative educators. It's a great way of networking with teachers from all over the world and learning more about Adobe tools in the classroom. Hi everyone, my name's Dr. Tim Patston and I'm really looking forward to seeing you at the APAC Adobe Education Summit. Lots of familiar faces there, Erin, and mm -hmm. very inspiring too. Just about everyone who presented in that video will be presenting either a classroom success story or a creative catalyst talk or a workshop opportunity. Erin, yes. let's go live to the site now to mm -hmm. see 
what is happening. So we're now live on the site. And if you're not sure, again, we've shown that link a few times. It's adobe.ly slash APAC-EDU-Summit22. And as we scroll through, uh, you will be seeing just before we go live on the 28th, you'll be seeing a link to a Vimeo live stream uh, mm -hmm. broadcast. And that's where you click to actually go into the show if you haven't registered. If you've registered, you will get that link sent to you via email. And as we scroll through, we'll notice that the starting time is nine o'clock in the morning, Australian Eastern Standard Time, which is four o'clock in the afternoon for the West Coast of America, 7 p.m. for the East Coast, 7 a.m. for Western Australia and most of Southeast Asia, a little bit early for India. They'll be connecting probably a little bit later in the day. But in New Zealand, it's halfway through the day for them. And the first segment, as we're scrolling through here, will involve the global Adobe education team. So we'll be hearing from Clara, from Brian Johnsford, from Ben Forder, from Tacey Trowbridge. It's going to be wonderful to connect with them. And then we're going to be doing a bit of a challenge for you during the day. We will be getting you to create an Adobe Express poster for social, and then we'll get you to send it out uh, using Adobe Express. And that'll be a, a nice little challenge to start the day. Oh, and then yeah. we're going to have a break. Erin, what's happening after our first break? Well, after our 10 a.m. break at 10.30, we're going to jump into some Adobe Classroom success stories. First up, we've got Drew Mayhills from WA who will be sharing with us. Then at 10.45, we've got a Creative Catalyst talk with Chris Betcher, who you've seen on previous episodes of this show. Then at 11, we've got a, CC, a Creative Cloud Express resource promotion and update. And at 11.15, Adobe Classroom success story by Michelle Dennis will be presented to us. It is a jam packed morning and which is why we have those regular breaks and so mm. the next break will be for about 30 minutes and then at 12 o'clock will be our keynote session with dr tim patston and dr patston is australia's leading researcher in creativity and innovation in education and i've met with him several times already building up to this event we're really looking forward to his presentation so he'll be spending about an hour with us and then after his session we jump into our first of our workshop opportunities. I'm going to click on the workshop info and registration link, and that'll take us to another site which allows us to see exactly what the workshop options are. So Jason Lane's going to be doing one on Adobe Aero. Aaron's going to be doing one on Adobe Express. And Roland, who's with us live at the moment, hi, Roland, is going to be joining us with a, a session on Adobe Acrobat. Um, mm -hmm. Ellie Blackwell from WA is going to be doing a session on Illustrator. And look, I won't read them all, but there's so many different options here yep. for you to get involved with. A lot of effort to create, to curate a nice wide range across the, the spectrum of the huge catalogue of Adobe products has been put together so that there is something in there in every session, hopefully for everyone. And covering just about all the applications that are used mm -hmm. in education for Adobe. And then if you want to join and register in advance, click on the register here link. That takes you to a form where you can just tick the box of which, which session you would like to go to to make sure that you're guaranteed to get that link to make sure you're part of that particular session. And we'd love you to try and get that registered and try and get your workshops registered by the 22nd of September. So you've got a bit of time to do that. And we're yeah. looking forward to uh, getting you involved in our APAC Adobe Education Summit. Are you looking and, forward um, to it? I am looking forward to it so much. So I'd love to see you there. So I have also popped the link that Tim gave us, which is the adobe.ly forward slash APAC dash edu dash summit 22. I popped that into the chat um, on the Adobe for Education YouTube channel and our other broadcast locations. So please click the link, check out the page, join us and get involved if you can. And I love what Roland said there, a jam-packed program guaranteed to mm -hmm. learn something all the way from Manila there. Thanks for joining us, Roland. Hello, welcome from Adobe's global education team and thanks for watching Inject Creativity Live. If you're looking for more inspiration, learning or resources, come join us at the Adobe Education Exchange at edX.adobe.com. Well over 1 million teachers have joined the Adobe Education Exchange to get lesson ideas and professional learning based on making the most of their Adobe applications in the classroom. One of the most popular courses on the Adobe Education Exchange is the Creativity for All course, which when completed allows you to join level one of the Adobe Creative Educator program. So far about 57,000 teachers have enrolled in the Creativity for All course. 
And if you look up adobe.ly forward slash ACE, you can do the Creativity for All course on the Adobe Education Exchange at any time on demand to get your ACE Level 1 badge. And alternatively, Erin and I will be running the Be a Creative Educator course almost on a monthly basis to help guide teachers through Level 1. Indeed. Look up adobe.ly forward slash creative educator and note that the next opportunity for this course is on October 27 and November 21. And those will be starting at 4 p.m. Daylight Savings Time, Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Time. So that's 3 p.m. for our Queensland colleagues like me. You're watching Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. Let's welcome our special guest, Peter Hutton, back to the stage to present to us. Over to you, Peter. Great. Great to be with you all. Um, death by PowerPoint. I might just bring up some, some slides to, to guide our progress today. Um, one of the uh, supporters of Future Schools is one Parsi Selberg, and uh, he's, he's always been a great supporter of ours, and he invited uh, David Runge, uh, co-founder of Future Schools, uh, my partner in business and my partner in business in life, Fiona, uh, myself and Parsi for a, uh, a week-long tour of Finland and then we did a week-long tour of um, Denmark. So we visited 15 schools in 10 days, so it was a very intense time. Uh, and I just wanted to share some of the findings from Finland. I, I do like a little alliteration so uh, here is us standing in front of one of the more traditional uh, looking school buildings. But very interestingly, in Finland, there are eight uh, key teacher training schools. So instead of being actually employed by the school, the teachers who are descri described uh, as um, uh, rock star teachers, uh, are actually employed by the university and they're expected to continue to research and that's like both what we would call hard research in terms of pursuing PhDs and postdocs, um, but also uh, what we term light research, so writing for uh, education publications, etc. So there are eight of those spread throughout Finland and so when you're doing your teacher training, and we've heard a lot about everybody having a master's degree, but I think what I didn't understand is when they're, when they're doing these master's degrees, anyone that teaches in Finland is a subject expert. So we've moved to having a master's of education that you, you know, have in addition to your bachelor's degree. But if you're teaching maths, for instance, in a primary school or a secondary school, you've actually got a maths major. So in comparison to Australian schools, uh, the Finnish educators uh, employ first on the basis of academic skill in their chosen discipline and then any anything else that they can bring to the school in terms of clubs or in personal interests comes uh, very much as, as a second. So in order to get into a classroom in Finland, you have gone and done your teaching rounds in one of these specialist facilities. Um, Finland, many of the schools in Finland are very traditional um, and, uh, you know, reflect the, the sort of Eastern Bloc um, architecture at the time, some of them quite brutalist, but they are trying to do some innovative things. So we're, um, you know, even though Finland, you know, uh, many years ago appeared on the top of the PISA table, um, they're adopting many of the innovations that we, that we see and f are familiar with around the world. Um, and so we visited a number of um, innovative Finnish schools, but we also um, wanted to see some of the more traditional schools as well. One of the things that we do see when we're looking around these Finnish schools is that they are, uh, like us, having an increased focus on well-being. And so this was uh, this is a school of, of approximately a thousand students, which is very big. Uh, for Finland, that, that's considered to be a very big school. Even 800 is considered to be a big um, secondary school. And um, you can see some pictures here that they're really trying to create some spaces, uh, chill out spaces for students to, um, to relax uh, as well as work in. One of the things that we noticed uh, on our trip to Finland, this is obviously one of their music rooms, but Finnish schools are very much concentrated on the academic curriculum as a, as a primary focus. 
And, you know, in the whole school, they might have one music room, you know, one art room, one hospitality room, which would be less than than we would see in Australia of equivalent size. But students in Finland spend on average the equivalent of five years less at school. So when we were talking to some of the young people, they basically said, look, we come to school to get our education and then we go out and then we live our lives after school. I thought that was a really interesting observation uh, from, from the young people. But increasingly, particularly in some of the progressive schools, they're trying to create, uh, to cater for students beyond just their, their basic academic interest. Uh, one of the things about fin Finnish schools and certainly something that Professor Parsi Selberg is very keen on introducing to Australia is the notion that they feed the students each day. And uh, as we said earlier, one of or I've recently been appointed as executive director at Gisborne Montessori School, and very proudly we feed all of our 110 students each day. So we're moving down that pathway. I uh, have a picture of one of the more traditional schools, and you can see it's quite an austere building. And I've got the word trust at the top, but I've actually moved that word to underneath because trust is really the bedrock of the Finnish system. And I'm not only talking the schooling system. If you talk to Finnish people, there is an enormous amount of trust that they have in their in their politicians, in their bu government bureaucracy. Uh, the principals have a, a huge amount of uh, faith and trust in their staff. The students display an amazing level of trust in their teachers. Teachers have trust in their principals, etc. Very, it really was quite staggering, this, this level of deep trust um, within the system that, that we see there. Um, this is just a bit of a slide, and I'm sorry it is off centre, but this is something that's rel been introduced relatively new uh, or recently in Finland, and that is that they've moved to what they call their period system. We might call it an elective block system. So you'll see a number of subjects here, and some of them are underlined. Those ones are compulsory subjects, and they have to complete those compulsory um, uh, subjects in a three-year cycle. And all of the rest of them, the ones that aren't underlined, are electives. Each one of these subjects runs for six weeks, and in their final week, they actually um, it's a requirement that they have uh, an exam, an assessment of some, of some description. One of the things that really impressed me about Finland is that there's a huge amount of trust given to the educators um, or given to the schools. And even within schools, rather than being run by principals and leaders, they're actually run by the, the staff themselves. I just love this little picture, but, um, you know, it can reach 30 below in Finland. And so all of the schools are equipped with these sort of drying areas and they have heated drying racks for student clothes, etc. Um, this is a picture of, of David Runge, my colleague, standing in front of one of these vehicles. In Finland, young people can drive a certain range of, of um, vehicles from the age of 15, including motorbikes. And so you'll see here that uh, these, this is the student car park, and they're allowed to drive these. And uh, on, our final, on our final day in Finland, uh, we were at the school on the right, and uh, the principal was proudly showing us the new gymnasium, which you can see behind all these motorcycles. And the bell went. I was sort of somewhat surprised to see that they had bells. Um, but uh, the bell went, and all these young people streamed out of the building, both male and female, jumped on these motorbikes, and one particular student cracked a mono that I would be incredibly proud of. I, I was sure he was going over backwards, but instead he, he did a mono uh, one wheel, uh, out of the school, waving to the principal with one hand, and the principal, as calm as a cucumber, turned to us and said, I will talk to him about safety tomorrow. And I really think that sums up the, the Finnish system, huge amounts of professional trust, uh, and it was, it was just amazing to see it in person, and Future Schools is actually planning a, a tour of Finland and uh, other areas in Europe next year. So just some of our findings from Finland. It was a wonderful experience. Peter, thank you so much for sharing. And uh, a question I guess I have for you 
is let's say you're talking to a school principal or executive team at a school now. What's maybe one or two things that a school in Victoria in the current system could adopt that you've learnt from Finland to make mm -hmm. things slightly different but maybe even better based on what you've learnt from the Finnish experience? It, it's a real challenge to identify those things, Tim, because so much of um, what what has made the, the Finnish system successful is deeply embedded in, the, in their overall culture. Um, my personal challenge... In, in my current role at Gisborne Montessori is to try and build those levels of trust, uh, trust in the staff, the staff trusting in, in, in the students. I think, I think like I'm not completely, uh, I haven't got a complete plan of how to do that, but I know that that, that trust is the bedrock of their success uh, in, the, in their system. The other, the other thing is in looking around Finnish schools, and Parsi Selberg is one of the first to say this, is Australians are doing some great things in terms of innovative practice. You know, I, I think in many ways we're leading the world in terms of our innovative practice. So whilst we should look to examples like Canada and Finland and, and so on, we shouldn't undersell how far we've come uh, in, in our own, um, you know, professional development. Peter, thank you so much for your time and we'll hear from you again just towards the end of this episode, but we always value the um, wisdom and the experience that you have shared and you continue to share on our show. So thanks again, mate. Really thanks so much, Tim. Hi, I'm Tacey Trowbridge, Head of Adobe's Thought Leadership and Advocacy. Thanks for watching Inject Creativity Live. And if you're excited about creativity, take a listen to the Creative Educator Podcast. Well, folks, Adobe Max is Adobe's largest global event. It is where Adobe announces new apps, new features within current apps, and celebrates digital creativity with a global audience. This year, Adobe Max is a hybrid event that will be held from October 18 to 20 with about 6,000, which is a lot less than we normally have, face-to-face -face attendees, but hundreds of thousands, if not millions, joining us online from all parts of the globe. I plan to be one of them, and you can register via max.adobe.com to stay in touch and find out more about the world's biggest and best digital creativity event and join the education stream. Hi, Rebecca Hare here from the ACE course on the Education Exchange. Thank you for watching Inject Creativity Live. If you haven't taken the ACE course yet, definitely go to the Education Exchange and sign up and I'll see you there. If you're on Facebook and not already a member of the Australasian Adobe Education Community Facebook group, please join via facebook.com slash groups slash A-U-S-A-E-L. Join us and keep regularly involved with Adobe in Education and the wider community. We have a newsletter called the Adobe in Education Update Australasia, which now has a new look via adobeapacedu.com. Complete the contact form via adobe.ly forward slash contact dash edu dash APAC if you don't already get a reminder about this publication each month and join the email list. All right, Jerry, let's hear some familiar music in the background and we'll bring Peter and Jerry back up to the uh, stage. There we go. You can hear that beautiful music in the background. Now, Peter, any closing words of wisdom from you? I think, I think mine's more of a challenge, Tim, and I laid this down earlier. In Australian education, how do we build those deep levels of trust uh, at all levels between students and staff, between staff and principals, and of course, principals to teachers to students? I think that's going to be the real challenge that could be a game changer for Australia. And I guess also trust between politicians and teachers too, with all the things that have been talked about in the media at the moment about how to improve our system that seems to not be getting the levels that are expected. And yet we keep hearing about let's improve teacher quality. Well, maybe let's improve some trust. I think you had some really good statements there, mate. Thank One of the that. things I'm just going to drop in there, Tim, because you've started me off, is that in <laughs> Finland, in Finland, the Department of Education is in a different building in a different suburb to the Ministry for Education. So it actually puts a very clear divide between the minister and stops them getting involved in the day-to-day -day of education. 
There you go. Yes. There's a little tip for us all. All right. <laughs> uh, those are, Aaron, we, you've got something to share with us, I think. Yes, yeah, so our next Inject Creativity live event will actually be following this live stream um, with Adobe Education Leader Mark Christie. So for those who've joined us live, please stay on for the recording of the next episode and then for the fireside chat with both of our presenters from tonight. Thank you, Erin and Jerry, for helping me put this show together. And special thanks to Adobe Education Leader Tim Colesgrove from Canada who has been monitoring the live chat online. And thanks to those of you who are with us live at the moment. You, you can view the past episodes of Inject Creativity Live as well as a new set of 30-minute Adobe for Education webinars by Dr. Tim Kitchen via the Adobe for Education YouTube channel at bit.ly forward slash ICL dash playlist. Jerry, I'll get you to put that slide up there so that people can see that uh, link, bit.ly slash ICL playlist. Yeah, slide 13. It was Jerry. We've lost Jerry. There we go. I Jerry's can also pop it people. into the chat and then oh. pop it up on the screen that way. It's also available at adobe.ly forward slash ICL playlist like that. There we go. Has kindly done it for us. All right. The next opportunity to join us for a recording of Inject Creativity Live will be after the APAC Adobe Education Summit, and it'll be on Wednesday, the 12th of October at 5 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time with special guest presenters Chris Betcher from Google and Brett Kent from New South Wales Department of Education. We'll see, see you, you all at the next episode. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. Let's get Rob the Robot to sign off this episode. See you later. Thank you for watching this episode of Inject Creativity Live. If you are not watching this live, join us live next time. Use this QR code or link to find out about dates and times. And use this QR code and link to find out about other Adobe in Education professional learning opportunities. On behalf of the Adobe in Education team, keep being creative. Creativity Live Show. My name is Rob the Robot from the Adobe Education Team. This is a free online show for primary, secondary and post-secondary educators interested in enhancing digital literacy, communication and creativity in the teaching and learning process. Here are your hosts, Dr. Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithkin. Thanks, Rob. Welcome to this special pre-APAC Summit episode of Inject Creativity Live, a show based on creativity for all in all education with a focus on Adobe tools and resources. Welcome, Erin. Hi, Tim, and a special welcome to everyone who's joined us live and those watching on demand via the Adobe for Education YouTube channel or the Australasian Adobe for Education Facebook group for this, the 79th episode of Inject Creativity Live, which will be focused on the coming APAC Adobe Education Summit. Um, so we're recording this episode in September of 2022. For those of you who are with us live, we do encourage you to say hi in the chat, share where you're from and add some comments throughout the show. We have a one, the wonderful Tim Cosgrove from Canada in the background monitoring the chat and he will share the most relevant comments as they come in live. Let's start this episode with an acknowledgement of country. We respect and honour all Indigenous people from the lands we reach out to during this event. We acknowledge their stories, traditions and living cultures. We acknowledge them as the first educators and the first creatives, and we commit to building a brighter future together. I'm coming to you from Warringeri land in the Kulin Nation, otherwise known as Melbourne, Victoria, Australia. And I'm coming to you from the country of the Jagara, Yugara and Ugurupal people from around the area, otherwise known as Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. Let's welcome our techie whiz, Adobe Senior Customer Success Manager, Jerry Wong to the stage. Hi, Jerry. Hi, everyone. I'm coming to you from the home of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, 
otherwise known as Sydney, New South Wales. During this episode, we will be hearing from Adobe Education Leader, Mark Christie. Yay, we'll be promoting the APAC Adobe Education Summit, which will be happening on Wednesday, the 28th of September. To help promote the summit, we'll be going through some of the expected highlights and some of the workshop opportunities. We'll also be sharing a number of Adobe related education resources and professional learning opportunities for you to take back to your schools, universities and other places of learning. We do hope you enjoy this episode. And if you do, please share it with your colleagues and wider education networks via the Adobe for Education YouTube channel. You're watching Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. Well, let's meet our special guest for this episode and welcome back to the show, Adobe Education Leader, Mark Christie. There he is. Hi, Mark. Hi, Tim. Hi, Erin. How are you? Mark, it is great to have you back to the show. So for those who haven't met you before, please tell us a bit about your role with the Northern Territory Department of Education. So I'm the uh, Director of Digital Initiatives and really that's uh, all about getting the most out of digital solutions in over 150 schools across the Northern Territory. Um, and a large part of that involves Adobe. Uh, and as a matter of fact, tomorrow I'm going to be out at uh, Larrakia Primary School and Larrakia is the country that I'm on, uh, which is Darwin. Nice. Hey, uh, we're uh, looking forward to seeing you live at the Adobe Sydney office as one of our summit presenters. What are you looking forward to most about the coming summit? <laughs> People in person. <laughs> I'm really looking for you can only do so much online and I'm really looking forward to catching up with people in person. I saw those, saw the, um, uh, the, the, the videos or there's more, more videos coming and it's, that's going to be the key thing. Now, Mark, before Erin asks you the next question, uh, I need to sort of clarify that the summit is face to face for the presenters. So we're all, a lot of the Adobe education leaders from Australia will be getting together in Sydney. We're all staying in Darling Harbour and we'll be based at the Adobe office in Darling Harbour in Sydney. But most of the people at the summit will be online. So it's a bit of a hybrid event, but Mark's, uh, and I agree with Mark, I'm so looking forward to catching up with those Adobe education leaders who I haven't seen for at least two or three years. It's, it's gonna be great. It's the energy, that's the thing. That energy is gonna come through the screen and no matter where you are, you're gonna enjoy it. Fantastic. And just a bit, Director of Technical Initiatives, was it? That is such no. a cool job description. That, no, Digital no. Initiatives. Digital, digital initiatives, initiatives, digital initiatives. I knew I had it wrong. That's why I wanted to check because uh, that's a very, uh, very yeah. cool. It's such a descriptive job description. Um, so what will you be sharing with us, um, Director of Digital Initiatives, this episode? <laughs> this episode, we'll be having a look at how you can use Premiere to edit, edit videos on slow computers because in schools, we've mm. got lots of slow computers. And here's a way cool. that we can actually make it work. So true, <laughs> so true. Thanks, Mark. We are looking forward to hearing from you very soon. We hope you're enjoying this episode of Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. Well, as we just mentioned, the 2022 APAC Adobe Education Summit is happening on Wednesday, the 28th of September. Sorry, and if you, if you have haven't done, done so already, it looks like I'm keeping reading here, Aaron, I apologise. Please okay. do register via adobe.ly slash apac-edu-summit22. We have already had over 2,000 views, in fact, 2,500 views of the summit site already. And I'm going to say this slowly to give you time to queue up the beautiful <laughs> video of this great event where we can meet some of the presenters. <laughs> I'm going to be at the APAC 2022 Adobe Summit. I am looking forward to sharing uh, some of the work that I'm doing, learning some of the things that you are doing. Clara here from the Adobe Education Team. I lead our global education community programs and I'm excited to see you at the APAC Adobe Education Summit. Just to get some new ideas, it's great to see the keynote speaker. Um, and I particularly love picking up um, tips from my peers as well. So always um, time well spent attending the summit. Hi, Ben Falter here, and I'm looking forward to seeing you at the APAC Adobe Education Summit. It's a great opportunity to work with and learn from uh, 
array of colleagues who I admire and respect. I'm looking forward to meeting like-minded people doing digital technology skills and increasing those and, and also networking with others. It's a chance to connect with like-minded creative educators and share our experiences. Because I believe it's a fantastic opportunity to connect with my colleagues and find out what amazing things they're doing with Adobe tools in their classrooms. This is a great way to meet new colleagues and reconnect with old colleagues. It's fun, friendly and free. It is the best way to learn everything I need to know about the latest Adobe updates and it's also a really good chance to see best practice. It's an awesome event filled with educators who wants to empower everyone with the use of Adobe tools and technologies. It must be spring in Sydney and we all know that's where folks will be physically and virtually learning and sharing in all things creatively Adobe. I want to be inspired by some of the best Adobe education leaders in the world with their amazing ideas that I can bring back to the classroom. I know that this will enhance my own creativity in lessons, and I know that this will also achieve better student learning and outcomes. After two years of COVID and remote learning, Zoom calls, Teams meetings online, I think it's gonna be amazing to get back in the same space with uh, my fellow educators. It provides me with opportunities to meet with educators that are creative and passionate about providing opportunities for students to succeed in their learning using a variety of the Adobe digital tools. It's a great opportunity to share ideas, learn from friends, develop skills. It's such a great way to learn new things and to collaborate with other people who are working in your space as creative educators. It's a great way of networking with teachers from all over the world and learning more about Adobe tools in the classroom. Hi everyone. My name's Dr. Tim Patston, and I'm really looking forward to seeing you at the APAC Adobe Education Summit. Well, I'm inspired, I'm looking forward to it. Let's just jump straight to the live site. And we've had a look at that link many times. You can see it on the screen as well. So I won't need to repeat it. You can always rewind if you wanna see it again. Uh, that lines the date for the main summit. Of course, we're running a pre-summit for our Adobe education leaders and Adobe creative educators the day before mm -hmm. the summit. And those of you who are AELs and ACEs, you would have already got lots of information about that before. If you're unsure, if you want to join the pre-summit, just email me. You should have my email address by now, kitchen at adobe.com. And uh, feel free to email me to get an invitation to the pre-summit. But for everybody else, this is what's happening. You're going to get a live link from this site on Vimeo live stream. So you can just click on that and then be part of the show live. Uh, we'll also have a, everything recorded as well and it'll be archived through this site as well as some other sources. And Erin, notice that the starting time is nine o'clock in the morning, Australian Eastern Standard mm -hmm. Time. And just take note of where that relates to you, wherever you are in the world. And as we mm -hmm. scroll through the couple of videos that you may have seen before, but Looking at the very start of the program that day, we're going to have our global Adobe education representatives such as Tacey Trowbridge, Brian Johnsford, Ben Forder and Clara Galan. They're going to be doing a little presentation for us, pre-recorded, but it's going to be great to hear from them. And we're going to set up a little challenge for everybody through Adobe Express. And then we're going to have a break with an hour on, half hour off hour on, half hour off throughout the day. Tell us about the second session for that day, Erin. So as we're going through, if you could, because we're up to 11.30 a.m. where the, we've got Tim Patston, that's what I can see on the screen, Tim, if you wouldn't yeah. mind oh, okay. going a little so bit further down. The, after the 10 a.m. break, the 10.30 session there with Drew Mayhills, you can't see that? Uh, wait, there we go. After 10.30, the 11 a.m. break, we've got the keynote by Dr. Tim Patston, which we spoke to in the last episode. And on the screen, that's as far as I can see on your share, but I've got yeah. it up on mine, so that's fine. We've got a 1 p.m. break. And then at 1.30, we go into workshop sessions. Sorry, um, just, just interrupt. That, that second session starts at 10.30 with Drew Mayhills. 
and then Chris Betcher, and then we've got uh, a promotion. Ah, yes, because, sorry, we spoke to this in the like, previous episode, so I thought yeah. that there was something I was <laughs> missing. Yes, yeah, so we've got some lovely classroom success stories um, at 10.30 a.m. with Drew May Hills, and another at 11.15 with Michelle Dennis. In between, we've got Creative Catalyst Talk with Chris Betcher at 10.45, and then a Creative Cloud Express resource promotion and update at 11. We've got some nice half-hour breaks in there, too, to give everyone plenty of time to percolate and absorb before they take in the wonderful um, next sessions. Yeah, and Dr. Tim Patson will be doing the keynote for the next session. And he is Australia's leading researcher in creativity and innovation in education. And after his session, we have our workshop opportunities. Now, if yes. we click the link that says workshop info and registration, that'll take you to all your workshop options on a separate express site here and you can just and my apologies tim that's what i thought we were going to be covering during this little summary i thought we were jumping straight into the workshops um, no, we're doing, yep. and then when you click register here then you can actually see the full list of all your options and then mm -hmm. tick whichever one it is you want to do for that session and then whichever one you want to do for this session notice you can only choose one so choose yeah. wisely and click submit and then we'll make sure you get all the information required to join that workshop. Erin, you're um, running one of the workshops, aren't you? I am running one of the workshops and it definitely is worth mentioning. Um, the workshops are obviously not just for, you know, people who happen to be on site on the day, we actually are going to be delivering these digitally. So one of the important reasons that you need to register for these workshops before the 22nd of September is so that we can send out to you all of the email links to each workshop um, person's individual room so that you can make sure you have all of the links nice and far in advance so that you can join the workshops with a minimum of fuss and um, mucking around with technology. It's going to be a fantastic summit and we are really looking forward to having as many teachers as possible join us at different parts of that day. You're watching Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. Now, Adobe has a new resource that maps Adobe Education Exchange teaching resources to the Australian curriculum called School Project and Lesson Ideas with Adobe. So please look up adobe.ly forward slash AC projects to make the most of this new resource and share it with your colleagues. And let's hear from Tacey. Hi, I'm Tacey Trowbridge, head of Adobe's thought leadership and advocacy. Thanks for watching Inject Creativity Live. And if you're excited about creativity, take a listen to the Creative Educator Podcast. Let's welcome back our guest, Mark Christie, back to the stage. There he is to share with us. Mark, uh, you've got a pre-recorded video. What's it about? Well, it's all about using Premiere to, uh, to actually create proxies, but it's uh, also integrating character animator as well. So it's a real life example of what we might actually be doing in schools and trying to get the most out of the slow machines that we might have in our classrooms. Oh, well, let's get started. Thanks, Aaron. If you can play that, that'd be great. Puppets, boxes, premiere and pupils. Today, I want to show you how you can work fast on slow computers. We will be using Adobe Character Animator, Adobe Premiere Pro, Audition and Adobe Media Encoder to carry out the following tasks. We'll capture a character animated performance. You? We'll export that with a transparent background. We'll import that into Premiere so you can integrate that with real footage, Hi, with real people from your TV school crew. as a background. We'll export for upload to YouTube, Vimeo, MS Stream, or another location. And we'll complete this on a slow student or teacher computer. To explain this, I'll use a proxy or substitute in the form of a character animator puppet. Let me introduce you to Penny. What is a computer? An i5 computer with 8 gig of RAM and older than four years. Still good enough for word processing and internet research, but not for video editing. If you have a new powerful computer, you'll still probably want to use proxies to edit 4K video or multicam video. The best part of this is that it is easy to get started. In order to achieve our tasks, we need a workflow or project plan. Here's one I prepared earlier. We need a script, 
we need to shoot our video with real people in a real place. We then import that into Premiere and create a proxy. We record our character animator performance. We export that as a transparent video to import, merge and edit in Premiere. We add our titles and credits and then we export. I think we need an explanation of some of the words I will be using. Ingest, transcode, codec, proxy and scrub. Premiere and Adobe Media Encoder ingests or digests your videos, transcoding or converting them into a more digestible size, a smaller resolution, using a codec, a video display translator, a compressor decompressor codec that is more friendly for editing playback. Premiere then uses that smaller, more digestible proxy file as a substitute for you to quickly scrub through or play back and forth your video while you edit it. When you export, the originals are used and you end up with a high quality video. So in my video, I have one actor who is human and another who is a character animator puppet. I've filmed the human part of the scene and that actor has to imagine they are talking to their animated character opposite them. This means leaving enough room for the puppet to be in shot. Apart from the light strobing effect, which is quite annoying, and I should have shot at 30 frames per second. I'll know that next time. My puppet was facing the wrong way. So I flipped this video horizontally in Premiere. So my video was captured in HD, that is 1920 pixels wide by 1080 pixels high. That's probably the limit of what you would bring into a slow computer. When the humans spoke, they thought they left enough gaps for my character animator friend Pepe to speak his bits. What is a better way or better process is to read and time each segment so that each character can nod and talk at the right time. So knowing the time that it will take for someone to actually speak each particular sentence or phrase. Once that's done, I import the video clip into Adobe Premiere Pro using the proxy ingest setting. Thank you very much, and I'll now hand back to Mark. Although there is an ingest preset supplied with Premiere Pro, in my opinion, it is still too large for editing. We will create our own custom ingest preset using a smaller frame size. This is a three-step process which involves creating an export preset in Adobe Media Encoder before using the settings from that export preset to then create the ingest preset. A newly created ingest preset is then added to the options for the creation for proxy videos in Premiere Pro and can be applied in batch to your imported videos for much faster editing. It can be shared to your student computers to provide them with a one-click create proxy with this custom proxy setting. I create the export preset setting frame size to 480 by 270 pixels and set the codec to QuickTime ProRes proxy. It handles editing better than H.264. I'll also add a little label over the top of the video so I know it is a proxy video, although there are many visual cues to show me when a proxy video is being used. Make sure when you name your presets to include the word export or ingest in the name that you give to the preset. Because if you create a number of presets, it may not be clear if it is an ingest or export preset. Once I have my export preset created, I then create the ingest preset in Media Encoder using the export preset as the base setting. When creating the ingest preset, only select transcode not copy, otherwise you will not be able to add this ingest preset to the create proxy option in Adobe Premiere. I also want to call out that if you create a proxy for alpha channel video, the transparent video we exported from Character Animator 
The proxy version of that video will not be transparent, which means for editing and aligning the puppet character over the top of the underlying real video with the human, it doesn't work. So for alpha video, creating proxy videos may not add value. Having created the ingest proxy preset file, we need to locate the file and add it as a custom preset to Premiere Pro. One way to find the file is to right click on the newly created ingest preset in Media Encoder, select show file location and copy the file path. Then go to Premiere Pro, select a video or videos you want to create proxy substitute videos for, select add ingest preset and paste in the path you just copied. You can then select the particular preset file and use that. Adobe Media Encoder will start up, transcode and create proxy files for you. Once that is done, you can close Adobe Media Encoder. In Premiere, in the timeline, you will want to toggle between the original raw video sometimes and the smaller substitute proxy file. If the toggle proxy icon is not available, simply click on the plus button in the editing window on the right hand side and add the toggle proxy icon to your dashboard. When highlighted blue, that means a proxy file is in use and you should see much faster scrubbing. Disabling the proxy will result in stuttered scrubbing through the video on the timeline, so this is where the real value and power of video proxies comes into play. From a workflow point of view, getting the preset made, the raw videos copied off memory sticks and onto the computers and then transcoded to create proxy files before the editing process starts is something to weave in with other activities because the copying and transcoding can take quite a bit of time. Because the computer is slow, you might want to switch to some non-computer activity like camera work, scripting, scene or story review while the files are rendering. After the proxies are created and students are familiar with the toggle button, they will see an amazing jump in productivity while editing and this will result in higher quality video production. After editing is complete, you can either take advantage of the new quick export button on the top right hand side of Premiere Pro or use the file export to export your video via Media Encoder to a variety of destinations. In either case, the lesser quality proxy videos are swapped out for the higher quality originals. Job done. Wow, there was a lot in that. And uh, Mark, are you still with us? So you seem to you seem to have disappeared there. There he is. He's back with us. Oh, I haven't We've got a lovely it. little making of after. Did we want to? Do we have time to play that, Tim? Or can 30 we? Thirty seconds. Um, yep. Let's yes. let's go for it. Let's go. Let's for go it. for it. Great. Let's, let's watch it together. Can I help you? I'm Mark. I'm looking for the Vamp TV crew. Hi, Mark. I'm Pepe. You just missed them. They have headed out to Bickerton Island for a film shoot. Oh, that's a pity. I wanted to congratulate them on moving more than a decade's worth of great VAM TV episodes to our new Vimeo platform. Yes, I heard about that. It was a great job. All episodes are available on vamtv.ntschools.net. Hey, Mark, I've been trying to get an audition slot with those guys for ages. You look like a guy with connections. Can you get me in the door to audition with the VAM TV show? I can't sing. But I can bust some cool dance moves. I'll see what I can do. Um, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. I appreciate <laughs> it, man. Later. Oh, yeah, yeah. Very cute. Well done, Mark. Look, a lot of preparation put into that. And incredibly practical, too, because so many schools just don't have high end computers to be mm. able to use the normal video files that come in. So for those teachers who are struggling with Premiere Pro because they just haven't got the computers, the grunt to be able to just import videos from their cameras directly and then, and then work with it, then Mark's giving you some great tips on how to manage Premiere Pro 
uh, with those proxy files. A little bit technical, but you've got it all on video now. You can go back yes. frame by frame and just work through the process. Mm -hmm. And speaking of which, I did notice the vamptv.ntschools.net. Would you like me to share that link in there in the oh, chat please, for you? Please. Uh, yeah. And is that the location where we could actually find your lovely in-depth video so we can watch, rewind and pause? Or well, do you have I've another link that you'd like to share? Uh, I've sent that through to you on email. Um, on uh, email, I, wonderful. Well, yeah. I will find that and we can um, share it to people during the fireside chat and I'll also be to ensure to include it I in my just, show summary um, page that I create in. for tonight. Thank you. And, of course, you can just re-watch this episode again. Indeed. And that's probably the quickest way to do it. Mark, thank you so much for all the preparation that you put into that pre-recording and that's going to be a really practical help for lots so of people. Great. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Tim and Emma. Hi, everyone. I'm... <laughs> oh. Hi, everyone. I'm Thanks. Tanya Abbott from the Global Education Team here at Adobe for Education. I'm so excited that you are watching Inject Creativity Live. Please check us out with the Adobe Creative Educator Program and be on the lookout for all the amazing challenges that we have every month. See you soon. Thanks, Tanya. Look, well over a million teachers have now joined the Adobe Education Exchange to get lesson ideas and professional learning based on making the most of their Adobe applications in the classroom. One of the most popular courses on the Adobe Education Exchange is the Creativity for All course, which, when completed, allows you to join level one of the Adobe Creative Educator program. So far, about 57,000 teachers have enrolled in the Creativity for All course. So if you look up adobe.ly forward slash ACE, you can do the Creativity for All course on the Adobe Education Exchange at any time on demand to get your ACE Level 1 badge. Alternatively, Erin and I run the Be a Creative Educator course almost on a monthly basis to help guide teachers through Level 1. Look up adobe.ly forward slash creative educator and note that the next opportunity for this course is on October 27 and November 22 and they'll be starting at 4 p.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Time. Hi there, it's Claudio from the Adobe Global EDU team. Thanks for watching Inject Creativity Live. If you haven't already, join the Adobe Creative Educator program. Adobe Max is Adobe's largest global event. It is where Adobe announces new apps, new features within current apps, and celebrates the digital creativity to a global audience. This year, Adobe Max is a hybrid event that will be held from October 18 to 20 in Los Angeles with about 6,000 face-to-face attendees, but online with hundreds of thousands, if not millions, all for free, joining online from all parts of the globe. Like me, please register via max.adobe.com to stay in touch and find out more about the world's biggest and best digital creativity event and join the education stream. You're watching Inject Creativity Live with Tim Kitchen and Erin Raithke. If you're on Facebook and you're not already a member of the Australasian Adobe Education Community Facebook group, please join via facebook.com slash groups slash A-U-S-A-E-L. Join us and keep regularly involved with Adobe in Education and the wider community. We have a newsletter called the Adobe in Education Update Australasia, which now has a new look via adobeapacedu.com. Complete the contact form via adobe.ly forward slash contact dash edu dash APAC if you don't already get a reminder about this publication each month and join the email list. All right, Jerry, let's hear some familiar music as we bring Mark and Jerry back up to the screen to say our farewell. Our next Inject Creativity Live event, episode 80, believe it or not, will feature the amazing Chris Betcher from Google. And episode 81 will feature the wonderful Brent, Brett Kent, sorry, Brett, from the New South Wales Department of Education. These episodes will be recorded on Wednesday, the 12th of October at 5 p.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Time. It'll be then uh -huh. after the APAC Adobe Education Summit. So for those watching live, get ready to move to adobe.ly forward slash edu dash meet dash APAC for our brief fireside chat where you can chat with our presenters from tonight. 
Special thank you to Aaron, Jerry, and Tim Colesgrove from Canada for helping us put this show together. And before Rob signs us off, Mark, any last words of wisdom from you? I think try out all of the applications uh, um, and, and use whatever tips you can to get the most out of them. Good on you, mate. Appreciate it. Advice. Thank you. See you so here is Rob the Robot, robot to sign off this episode. <laughs> Thank you for watching this episode of Inject Creativity Live. For those who are watching live, join us now via adobe.ly slash edu-meet-apac for an informal, non-recorded fireside chat to meet and interact with our presenters and other audience members. During this informal chat, you will be able to complete the feedback form and apply for a professional development certificate. If you are not watching this live, join us live next time. Use this QR code or link to find out about about dates and topics and use this QR code and link to find out about other Adobe in Education professional learning opportunities. On behalf of the Adobe in Education team, keep being creative.